Hello, good morning, and Ave to all of you. Thank you so much for coming. I come to you by no means a scholar. I'm also in no way a professional speaker, and I don't do talks like this often. I do not speak for any later mentioned religious groups. I am a member of the Satanic Temple, but I don't speak for them in any official capacity. All views expressed are my own and of those of whom I quote. I did this to hopefully clear the air a little bit and also provide some insight, at least enough to get you to further research or even begin to understand a little bit better on your own. My name is Lorelei. I was uh, raised in Rochester, New York by two German immigrants. I was baptized Protestant, but never practiced. In fact, my upbringing was primarily by a physicist father who used every opportunity to poke fun at religion, and a humanist mother who said that different people believe different things, but it's always important to be kind to one another. It wasn't until my college years later on that I read Richard Dawkins and Chris Hitchens, and I became a little enraged about what religion had done to humanity. I started seeking other like-minded people who felt the same. I found the atheist community of Rochester, participated, and then later became a board member. We primarily planned picnics, dinner meetings, and pride parade events. Shortly after, I met Kevin Davis, the co-founder of the Young Skeptics in the endeavor known as the Better News Club. This was an attempt to host critical thinking after school club, which countered the ever-invasive Good News Club. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had little success with only two to four children attending most every time, outnumbered by the adult volunteers that we had. It was a great, <laughs> it was a great idea, it was hard to execute for a bunch of working adults at 3 p.m. during a weekday. A few months later, the Rochester formed its own Sunday assembly, and I was in attendance for the first session. I attempted to help where I could with this as well, and I went to a few planning meetings. Unfortunately, this later faltered as well after a few months. The last secular group I became a part of in Rochester were the Rochester Humanists. I really enjoyed being part of all these groups. They were each wonderful in their own way. But something was always missing. They had the motivation to help their communities, but there was no oomph factor. I'd read about cases of secular church-state lawsuits and atheist invocations. In fact, Linda Stevens from the Greece vs. Galloway case is a friend of mine but they never grabbed my attention like the satanic lawsuits did. And in September of 2017, I had a turning point. An article came out talking about the Satanic Temple's Missouri case, Missouri v. Mary Doe, which had actually been pending since 2015. Women's bodily autonomy had always been a very important subject to myself, not just as a woman, but as a woman who had to make the incredibly hard decision of having an abortion a few months prior. The Satanic Temple was fighting fire with fire, using their status as a religion and arguing that under RIFRA, Mary Doe's religious rights were being violated. With a 72-hour waiting period and being given a written pamphlet to review prior to her abortion, filled with non-scientifically based anti-abortion propaganda, Mary Doe claimed that the state was violating a core tenet of the Satanic Temple. One's own body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. It was that week. <laughs> it was that week I looked into the Satanic Temple, the Church of Satan, United Aspects of Satan, and a few more that I'll get into more detail about later. I ended up settling on a membership with the Satanic Temple because their core tenets most closely align with my own beliefs, and because they seem to be the most active at a legal level. I then co-founded the Western New York Satanists, and a few months later moved to Michigan and am now a co-chapter head of the Friends of the Satanic Temple Detroit. Since then, I've had an innumerable amount of friends ask, why Satan? <laughs> Why choose the perceivably most evil deity in human invention and not just do charity work and enter lawsuits without an ominous symbol? I've also been asked how I can go from an atheist to worshiping a deity in the name of anti-religion. From non-secular individuals, this question can easily be described as fear. <laughs> from secular individuals, it comes from misunderstanding. 
Now, knowing how intelligent the secular community tends to be, it had really baffled me that this is still so misunderstood, especially with all the battles of church-state separation making headlines, especially those from the Satanic Temple. <laughs> I had an interesting social experiment plopped into my lap recently. My talk here today was advertised on the American Atheist page, and the response to their post was very telling for the type of attitude I've encountered from the secular community regarding Satanism. I'd like to share a few of my favorites. <laughs> I apologize, I didn't know how big this room would be, so I'm sorry for the back people, I'll read it a little bit. So, Satanists have an imaginary friend, secularism, secularism doesn't require an imaginary friend. Um, Satanism is, is just on the other side of the coin, atheists reject the entire currency. This person copy-pasted the definition for atheist, you know, in case I couldn't Google, I guess. <laughs> Um, so as you can see, many still believe that Satanists are devil-worshipping, hot-topic, loitering internet trolls. Uh, you know, that is the dumbest bleeping thing I ever heard of, bleeping atheists don't believe in Satan. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just more on and on. Um, I'd give them a, nine, a solid 97% wrong. <laughs> uh, most satanic groups are non-theistic, and they promote the value of self and personal pursuit of individuality and freedom. Yes, some of us shop at Hot Topic, but I prefer to shop online. <laughs> um, here's a few bonus comments just for a chuckle, not that we've already chuckled. <laughs> But um, this, you know, lines of not dyeing your hair purple and putting extra holes in your face would be cool, you know. Good inter internet argument isn't good without an ad hominem. Um, I want no ism in my life. We had to remind them that they're on an atheism page. <laughs> and uh, should we put on a rock concert? Jokes on this guy, we already did without him. <laughs> um, so prior to this display of erroneous misunderstanding, I had reached out to several, several secular groups and uh, atheist groups to get more formal answers on the perception of sat Satanism. So I basically sent out a survey that says, without looking it up, what does Satanism m mean to you? And then it says, what's your religious or non-religious affiliation? So the responses were uh, devil worship, worship of religious deity, worship of a mythical character. Um, Worship Satan, primitive superstition, worshiping of a deity, etc. So, as you can see, my perception of what the secular community perceives is that we might need to take a little bit more of an informed and intrinsic look at what Satanism is. So, to begin, maybe a little bit of background. I want to broaden the understanding of Satanism from inception to what it is in modern day. In Old English, it's Satan. In Greek, it's Satanas. In Hebrew, Satan which was originally not a name, but instead an ordinary noun which meant adversary, or one who plots against another, or one who opposes, obstructs, or acts as an adversary. Satanism was adopted from the French satanisme. This was the term used first recorded in the 16th century as a tax from one rival Christian group to another. An author of a Roman Catholic tract in 1565 condemns the heresies, blasphemies, and satanismes of the Protestants. Later in 1559, Anabaptists and other Protestant sects were condemned as swarms of Satanists in Anglican work. The, the word Satanista, first seen in early Swedish language around 1615, was not a claim that people worshiped the devil, but rather that the speaker or writer that it was directed at was essentially in league with the devil as a variant of Christianity. It wasn't until the 19th century that Satanism began to describe those leading an immoral lifestyle and those consciously and deliberately venerating Satan. In the 1960s, with Anton LaVey's Church of Satan, the term Satanist was fully embraced by those who weren't just called such. Satanists championed the term. It was no longer the name for those gone astray from Christianity. It was now the name for rebels against imposing Christian values. Out of the rise of Satanism in the 1960s, the satanic panic began to evolve and become more outlandish, ridiculous, and dangerous than a group of obstreperous anti-theocrats could ever be. By the 70s and 80s, stories about ritual abuse, satanic cults and daycares, and the fear of demons in the occult being real had led to the devastation of many people's lives. Blame was laid in everything from heavy metal to Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> 
all to fit a narrative that everything that wasn't a societal normal was evil. This danger looms in society still today in the form of the International Society for the Study of Trauma and Dissociation, the ISSTD. The pseudoscience behind false memory or recovered memory therapy, dissociative identity disorder, and the accompanying self-policing of these organizations who promote this are prevalent today and causing harm still. There are groups, however, combating this modern age satanic panic, Gray Faction being a leader of this cause. Gray Faction is a project of the satanic temples, and their main focus is to expose the malpractice of the ISSTD. That catches us up historically to Satanism and its modernity. <laughs> when Satanism is mentioned in a public sphere today, the two main factions people think of are Church of Satan or the Satanic Temple. I don't want to get too much into detail regarding what each of the following groups do, abide by, or stand for. I implore you to look further into it yourselves. But I would like to just touch on each one of these just to show how many satanic groups and belief systems exist in modern society. And although most head in the same direction, all forge their own paths. We'll start with Luciferianism. This is a non-theistic belief system, and its followers embody the characteristics of Lucifer, seeing him as a liberator, guardian, and guiding spirit. The two churches that follow this are the Luciferian Church and the Greater Church of Lucifer, which is actually in Colombia. Uh, the Greater Ch or the Luciferian Church was created in 2015 in Texas, but the founder has since renounced Luciferianism and become a born-again Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Our Lady of Endor Church, its first public coven was actually recorded to come into existence in 1968, but the founder, Herbert Sloan, claimed that they had been around since 1948. There's kind of like a rivalry going on with them and Church of Satan about that. Ophites, as the members called themselves, believed in a version of Satan who was the snake in the Garden of Eden. Satanism, S-E-I-T-A-N, uh, is actually a theistic religion whose members emulate rather than worship the deity set. Followers believe they can achieve a form of self deification and thusly reach uh, like an immortality of consciousness. Uh, the main temple that follows that is the Temple of Set, which was founded in 1975 by Michael Aquino, was actually formerly a high-ranking member of the Church of Satan. The Satanic Reds, a form of Satanism, which sees Satan as a dark force rather than an actual deity. Uh, the Church of Azazel is actually polytheistic Satanism. Um, they revere the gods of the West, Lilith, Prometheus, Ishtar, Pan, and Lucifer, Sophia, as they manifest themselves in human action and human spirituality. The Process Church of the Final Judgment, or just the Process Church, is a, another theistic religion with Gnostic philosophies. They started in the 1960s in London and actually splintered off from Scientology. They believe that each human soul was ruled by one of the three spiritual currents, either Jehovah, Lucifer, or Satan. Uh, Satan House was formed in 2017 in southeast Michigan. They're a coven of esoteric Satanists who produce satanic philosophy and uh, ritual performance art. The United Aspects of Satan is an atheistic satanic religion founded by the high priest Damien Ball based on a belief in empathy, scientific and philosophical skepticism, social justice, and an unrelenting rebellion against superstition, blind allegiance to authority, and arbitrary social convention. So with all the good always comes bad, so I wanted to brief on one of probably the worst which the satanic community heavily condones. The Order of the Nine Angles is described as a satanic Nazi cult, and they use elements of Satanism, neo-paganism, and Wicca to promote an elitist social Darwinian philosophy. They condone and encourage human sacrifice, and many of their prominent members have written Aryan and neo-Nazi literature. So finally, back to the familiar. We have the Church of Satan, which was founded in 1966 by Anton LaVey. To them, Satan is the symbol that best suits the nature of who they are carnal by birth. Satan represents pride, liberty, and individualism. One of the only satanic faction that requires a membership registration fee at $225. Their presence is predominantly felt in the public, in, publicly on the internet as their philosophy concludes that members serve their communities as individuals rather than the Church of Satan as an entity. The Satanic Temple, I'm just gonna read their mission statement because any rendition I throw together will not do them justice. <laughs> 
The mission statement of the Satanic Temple is to encourage benevolence and empathy among all people, reject tyrannical authority, advocate practical common sense and justice, and be directed by the human conscience to undertake noble pursuits guided by the individual will. The Satanic Temple is headquartered in Salem, Massachusetts, and there is a European offshoot called the Global Order of Satan, but they base most of their tenets and philosophies on that of the Satanic Temple. If you want to know more about the Satanic Temple, there's a documentary coming out called Hail, Hail Satan with a question mark. Um, it's coming to select theaters this weekend, and I highly recommend you go see it. I have lots of friends in it, including that one over there. Where do you go, Dietrich? Yay! <laughs> um, so it's Great documentary. Um, I wanted to show how the satanic community influenced society in a positive way, so I reached out to a few satanic organizations to bring together a list of legal battles and church states of the church-state separation variety. Of course, um, those that responded seems much more is done at a personal level. Lawsuits are entered as individual rather than with the backing of an institution. In the arena of battles of separation of church and state, the satanic temple definitely takes the forefront. So I just wanna go over a couple of my favorites. The Oklahoma Ten Commandments and Baphomet. Um, this was a religious discrimination lawsuit involving a Ten Commandments statue on public property, which ultimately led to the Oklahoma State Supreme Court to order the removal of their Ten Commandments statue after a request for a Baphomet statue was presented by the Satanic Temple. <laughs> Uh, the Florida Capitol holiday display. <laughs> after, a <tw> after a 2013 rejection of a religious display based on claims that it was grossly offensive, the Satanic Temple teamed up with Americans United for Separation of Church and State, and uh, in 2014 were able to have their display sit amongst others at the Capitol. The Minnesota Veterans Memorial uh, in 2017, uh, after the Freedom From Religion Foundation put the city of Belle Plaine on notice that having a specifically Christian memorial violated the Constitution, the city opted to take it down. However, they then instituted a 10 display policy to resurrect their statue. The, <laughs> the Satanic Temple jumped in with a memorial statue of their own to promote religious plurality and also honor the veterans. There are two more, there are two big legal battles currently ongoing. Uh, the first being a request by the Satanic Temple for an invocation at the Scottsdale, Arizona City Council meeting. The city of Scottsdale promptly created a policy to exclude TST, to which legal counsel Stu DeHaan responded that this was an attempt at discriminatory backpedaling by the council. The next argument for that is actually in July. The other legal battle is with another Ten Commandments statue implemented by Senator Jason Rapert, who mandated that it be placed on the Arkansas Capitol grounds with his Ten Commandments Monument Display Act. <laughs> the Satanic Temple is assisting with this lawsuit as an intervener and, of course, offering up their Baphomet statue to promote religious pluralism. <laughs> There are many more examples of the Satanic Temple being a champion of church-state separation I'd love to get into, but can't because of lack of time. It spans from religious literature to students in Florida, to after-school Satan, their project, the, <laughs> their Protect the Children project, and as mentioned earlier, the Missouri versus Mary Doe, the malicious abortion literature case. Satanists have really banded together for their communities at a local level as well. With great collaboration and clever naming and PR, Satanists have adopted highways, cleaned up beaches, and done veterans outreach. Menstruating for Satan was a successful feminine hygiene product drive across the country. Suds for Satan in New York gathers shampoos and soap for charity that makes kits for homeless people. Diapers for Little Devils has provided less fortunate families with baby products. And warm as hell, coat and sock drives have been successful in providing warm clothes for the homeless. <laughs> This, this brings me to my last point. Many people believe that this basically just makes Satanism a social, social justice group or political activist group. Yes-ish. Uh, there are many aspects to Satanism, but more importantly, it means something different to each individual. Many Satanists actually pray, meditate, or perform rituals. In non-theistic Satanism, this means focusing on oneself. A story was once told to me that really made me understand what ritual meant in Satanic terms. Now, these next pictures are all from members, uh, 
Satanists, you know, across the internet. If your dog goes missing, praying for the dog to return, as we all know, <laughs> won't bring the dog back. A ritual in front of a shrine or altar isn't praying to get the dog back. It assists in centering yourself and refocusing on ways that you can get the dog back. Maybe five minutes of quiet sitting in front of a picture of the dog will help you remember he had the hots for some poodle on your walk last week. Maybe check at that house. A refocusing could give you a concentration that you need to find the missing dog groups online or message neighbors who could help. Lighting a candle could calm you down enough from your hysteria and give you the energy and strength you need to go and look for him, yourself. It's not about prayer to a deity. It's about finding your inner strength, a second wind, release some wishful thinking into the universe. Yeah, I can't actually curse my boyfriend's ex, but it sure feels nice to burn some incense and say a quick chant about hair loss. <laughs> <laughs> Ever scream into a pillow out of anger? Works just as well smashing something that holds a bad memory while listening to some heavy metal music. The one on the right is my altar. It has my idols on it, Bill Nye and Charles Darwin. <laughs> as well as the satanic imagery. Everyone builds theirs in their own way. The same goes for ritual performance. Yes, these shows have a high entertainment value, but the meaning behind them isn't lost in showmanship. They are oftentimes in conjunction with protest, a public speech, or countervent to something that opposes satanic values. Destruction rituals and unbaptisms are displays of letting go of the past and moving forward to your own new beginnings. These group rituals are littered with imagery familiar to the Judeo-Christian setting, but twisting them in a way to satisfy a satanic narrative. I had earlier briefed on what non-Satanists perceived of Satanism, but in closing I wanted to share what Satanists thought of Satanism. It's not just a group of goth kids trying their hand in activism. It's a philosophy of promoting self-worth, liberty, individualism, and humanism. So these just like, Satanism gives me more than just atheism. Um, Satanism to me is freedom. <laughs> freedom to believe what I want, do what I want, and live how I want. Why Satan? He was the first to demand equal rights. For those subjugated to speak out against tyrannical oppressors, Knowledge to him was a blessing and not a curse. Why Satanism? Fighting the rise of theocracy might just require an opponent that offers the theocrats a bit of their own medicine in the form of their worst enemy. The secular community and the satanic community are in the same boat when it comes to the separation of church and state. What's wrong with a little bit of rocking? Um, as Robert Ingersoll said, if the account given in Genesis is really true, ought we not, after all, to thank this serpent? He was the first schoolmaster, the first advocate of learning, the first enemy of ignorance, the first to whisper in human ears the sacred word liberty, the creator of ambition, the author of modesty, of inquiry, of doubt, of investigation, of progress, and of civilization. Thank you for your time, and can I get a Hail Satan on three? One, two, three, Hail Satan! All right. We've got time for a couple of Q&A questions, if people... We've got just a few minutes for a Q&A. Oh, See hand here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I, of course, uh, am sympathetic with all this, but in my community, uh, atheists are certainly going to hell. And if I came out and said I was supporting the unfortunate term Satan, I'd get shot. So I'm just saying. So. <laughs> what, so Q&As generally involve questions. Was there a question there? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm from Wilmore, Kentucky, where it's famous where they have the cross on top of the water tower. And I was a Christian, and I was all like, yeah, that's great. But now I'm like, oh, no, that's terrible. Um, is there any way that we can... I, I actually contacted so, a different thing, but is there any way that... What can I do to try to get rid of that? Or maybe have some other kind of symbol up there that isn't you know, well, Christian? Well, physically or legally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> legally. <laughs> yeah, um... 
Like I said, I'm not an official spokesperson for the Satanic Temple, but I highly recommend you go to their website. Um, I think it's just the Satanic Temple.com, um, and and message there, and you know they can look into it. They're they're spread very thin right now with what everything that they're doing, but yeah. Two items I wish you would address, please. Um, what's the difference in the devil and Satan, since they're both interchangeably used in the religious realm. So is it okay to say the devil is real and Satan, or the devil is not real if for atheist, but Satan is okay? And the other comment is, what affiliation the gossip has with some very large church in Rome that in the basement is billions of pieces of material that was protected that was actually Satanism itself. So the Roman church is affiliated with the Satan, Satanism. <laughs> I mean, I, like I said, I'm not a scholar. I didn't study this intensely. I just made enough for the speech. But um, I, I would say, I mean, to me, that first off kind of sounds like the whole satanic panic slash, you know, they had satanic imagery and maybe now on, you know, unveiling that is misconstrued as them being affiliated with Satanism, but I can't speak to that in any official way. <laughs> All right, one more. As a whoop, card carrying Satanist. <laughs> okay, as a card carrying atheist, I'd love to see the movie. Yeah. Where can I see it? I, I know it's pr produced by Magnolia Pictures, so um, I think. If you just like Google Hail Satan with a question mark and, and Magnolia <laughs> Pictures, I honestly don't know. We, I think we looked in Cincinnati. I don't think there was anything running here this weekend. Thank you and yeah. Hail Satan. Hail Satan. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Give it up for Lorelei.